Did I ever tell you the story of how I became a day one? No, you never did, actually. So when I was a little girl, I had really bad kidneys. Yep. And when I was seven years old, um, I was at the lodge, and our elder, our grand chief, Baduid, and he said to people, you know, if you need healing, you can come and you can become a day one. And, you know, I grew up with a lot of that traditional knowledge in my life, but I, I didn't really think about going and seeking it out. And um, it was that moment in my life at just seven years old where I was able to find my teachings and access that traditional healing, and I actually got better. I've always seeked those people, but I've never known how to find them. Well, our people for so long weren't allowed to actively share this knowledge because that's one of the ways that colonization was used against us. So it's really amazing that people feel like they can reclaim that and that there are amazing people who are coming up and, and giving this knowledge out so that we can all use it. Yes, I think that's going to be, you know, the main topic today and to try and find out, you know, exactly what they see for our future. Wellness. Wellness. <laughs>
spirituality is, and it's it's more than uh, a religious view. But it's it's actually as real as your physical wellness, and we can become motivated to look for a mineral bomazawin from our spirit being. And I like to tell non-native people when they came here 500 years ago, they didn't really wreck us. They're not the sole reason we're messed up right now. Yeah, things happened historically, and we're recovering from that. But we have stories in our own history where, where we became bad people long before they even came here. So when we talk about that, we can take an ownership of our own healing. When I was younger, I didn't know as much as I know now. I did blame non-natives. And then blaming non-natives for our situation, we're actually asking them to heal us. They can not heal us. We can heal us. We have the capacity in our own ancient ways of being, of achieving Minobomazuin again. Jetta's place and Jetta's place is pretty revolutionary. It combines Western medicine with traditional indigenous knowledge so it's bridging the gap between the two worlds. One of the things that we lost that I think people don't realize is our traditional health practices. Long before colonization we had ways of caring for each other. And people actually assumed that we never had anything you know before. We're here for thousands and thousands of years looking after ourselves. That knowledge is, is irreplaceable. Well, the nice thing about Dr. Hill, she's actually looking at incorporating indigenous medicines into the Western models, which is something that's not been that prevalent before. There is something really beautiful and profound about taking Western knowledge and all of the amazing things that they've been able to do and then taking that age-old indigenous knowledge and using both. Especially because if you look at Western medicine, so much of it is inspired or informed by ancient Eastern forms of medicine and Chinese medicine. Perhaps the next chapter for healthcare worldwide is for it to be led by indigenous knowledge. Since you've never experienced anything like this, I think that today should be your day for the full appointment. But don't, I know you're looking forward to this so much. Oh, it's fine. You know sure. I travel all over the place. Yeah, you really do. I'll come back when I need to. Are you sure? Absolutely. I think it'll be good for you. Thank you. Honey, hello. Hello. Sego. Sego. Serene. Hi, I'm Dr. Hill. I'm Chris. Chris. Nice Hi. to meet you. Thanks for having me. Glad you nice guys could you. make it. Come on in. Okay. Right. We have uh, Alva and Val. Alva and Val. Okay. Yes, they're the traditional medicine practitioners and counselors working here. So today we're going to do a visit with you. Okay. And this is what we call a collaborative visit where we all sort of bring our heads together. Okay. Your, your being is, we would liken it to a tree. If you had a tree in front of your house and it was a beautiful oak tree and one summer the leaves just started to turn brown and the leaves started to fall off, we wouldn't just run outside and spray paint all the leaves green and tape them all back on the tree and say, well, good, my tree is back. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of times in Western medicine, we'll only look at those leaves and not often taking the time to actually step back and look at the whole person or the whole tree and say, what's, what's happening? As a Western-trained physician, I rely on working with Alva and Val to help to fill in the rest of the picture. We know that in our people and Indigenous people, we've been through a lot, <laughs> right? And there's a lot of trauma, traumas that we still experience to this day. So now that we've explained to you sort of a little bit about how we look at health and you as a being, it's time for you to just share with us what are, what are the things that bring you here? Well, it's funny you were saying about trauma and change and things like that, and I recently went through a lot of that from an end, end of a relationship, actually, for 14 years. Mm -hmm. So that's been weighing pretty heavy. Physically, you know, they, I'm on all these medications from my doctor to prevent heart attack. My dad, we lost my dad about the same age as I am now. So they keep me on all kinds of medicines to make sure that doesn't happen, mm -hmm. which I don't know if that's good, but I've been taking them for so long when I tried to quit them, it was, everything got bad. Because of the trauma lately, uh, I've dropped about 12 or 14 pounds. 
and uh, I'm just starting to get back and eating again, and, and I feel good. Mm -hmm. I feel lots of energy coming back, but it's kind of a little bit of a tough road. From a medical perspective mm -hmm. and an Indigenous woman yes. perspective, I think that we can help you to become that person that you see emerging. Okay. And we can start with looking at some of those medications that you're taking. And seeing what they're for and, you know, check your blood pressure and that kind sure. of stuff, right? The key piece is going to be working with Alva and working with Val. Alva has the medicines. Working with Val to help you to lift that anxiety to help to dust off that spirit that's wanting to come out yeah. that's been not sure which road it was traveling, it's you know? Like. Yeah. I go in at a deeper level of where's that coming from? Yeah. Where did that message come from in my mind, in my heart, and we're gonna flip it. When you talk, your spirit or your ancestors behind you speak, and they're saying that there's not really anything too much wrong with you. It's just natural aging, but also to take the herbs even though you may stay on those other medicines, the um, herbs will help to support your body because a lot of those medicines are hard on your system. There's another message there for you to embrace all that you are, all of who you are, your native and your non-native side, because you're the kind of person that's gonna be the bridge to those two cultures. You carry two bundles, but you're in that space for some reason. So be all of who you are, celebrate all of who you are. So right now, Chris is getting the instructions on his traditional medicines that are being gifted to him. And so the reason that we're not filming is because it's part of a ceremony. And so that's really important that we respect our elders and we respect that Indigenous knowledge and we don't film that part. What's going on is actually really beautiful and I've never seen it done in a doctor's office like this. To see little pieces of the knowledge that I grew up with um, come to life in a place like this, just I'm feeling really full of gratitude and I'm excited for Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. What was that like? It wasn't like going to a doctor. It was it was like going to, uh, I don't know, it was, it was kind of like I was wide open. It felt like they, it felt like they just opened me right up and they saw everything. And you know, it was hard to, to go through it. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of it too, is that yeah. you don't need to hide anything. Yeah, and that's what they told me. So I just need to go forward and, and do what they asked. What's that feeling? Where are the tears coming from? I don't know. Somewhere. It's a closing and an opening. Does that make sense? It's the end of one journey and yeah. the beginning of another. Yeah, and it's a, it's a really, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a closure. Yeah, which is good. Still in there. Oh, yeah, it's, this is deep in your, yeah. in your bones. Yeah, it really is. Thank you. What just came out was needed to come out. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Ninjiwan, Gumbain. Hello, my name is Gumbain. That's my traditional name. My English name is Richard. I'm from Australia. Hi, my name is Selena Mills. I am an indigenous, mixed indigenous mom, writer, and body positive coach. I didn't grow up knowing my roots, knowing my tribe or my clan or any of that as a result of cultural genocide and oppression of my peoples. I've been impressioned about needing to have that information because I get asked constantly and I get tested and I get questioned about whether or not I'm native enough because I don't have the answers that people want about my direct lineage. To my people, to all indigenous people around the world, it's important that we keep our culture strong. It's important that we maintain it because if we don't, 
it's not going to survive. We walk the red road, we're ceremonial, we have our traditional feasts, and we do everything that we can to incorporate an indigenous lifestyle um, and belief system in our everyday life. The indigenous people of Canada and the indigenous people of Australia are very, very similar with their laws and cultures. It makes me very proud to see that it's still alive and it's still strong. As a family, harnessing through everyday life just all of the resources in the community and our friends and our adopted Indigenous family has been so helpful and I'm very grateful for that, but I also have a lot of heartache and frustration with the Indian Act that has essentially created these systems wherein we cannot actualize our own lives. Everything is controlled and we're not able to just do and live as we wish. Everybody needs to learn about who we are. It's all about unity and living together, building bridges. That's how we make a better place, a respectful place. Introducing the Nissan Kicks. Move to your own beat. We show ourselves in what we own, what we choose to love, curating the things we connect with that bring us joy. Because when we do, we love and live our most colorful life. Beyond Pet Food uses natural, purposeful ingredients because your goal is Beyond's mission, to help your pet thrive with recipes that include natural probiotics for digestive health. Go Beyond. We're here in Ottawa and it's a rainy day. But, uh, you know, it's not going to matter. We're going to go meet Isabel all day and working on uh, some exercise today, something you like to do. I've done that national certification for training to be a personal trainer. And, you know, even when I was going through it, it never even occurred to me that you could take that and indigenize that. And that's what Isabel's done. When I was growing up, I didn't know any women who were leaders in the field in sport right. and in fitness. It was all mostly men. Well, the nice thing about the show is that we're finding all these people, men and women, that are making these changes. Oh. It's the Odawa Friendship Center, actually. Okay. Look at that. There, there we is. are, there right there. That looks like a stretch. Rainy, Chris, how are hey, you today? Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Nice to see you. Isabel. Thank you. Thank hey, you, Isabel. Isabel. How are you? Pretty good. good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Listen, um, you wanted to know a little bit about what I do with personal training, right? Yeah. So what I was thinking we could do is uh, maybe I'll take you through a session. We'll, uh, do we have your permission to use you as a guinea pig today? Sure, guinea pig I am. <laughs> right on. Oh, straight up. Yes, and I want you to squish my hand once again. What is wellness? Wellness is when I feel good, when I'm calm, when I can make good decisions. When you feel good, you do good things. Part of my growing up was be able to determine who I wanted to be regardless of what's happening. So, and that's been tough, but life taught me well because it put me in all kinds of situations. Okay, so relax. Okay. <laughs> I had to find ways to feel good because as a mother and as a community leader, if you're not leading, if you're not strong, what happens exactly? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down here. You're actually a healer. Yeah, that's like, a lot of pressure, Chris. I know, I, I know, <laughs> but do you feel that that's, that's something that's within you, that was for I think, you? I think that I've been purposed. So amplify that. My life is creator-led, and I help people grow, help people get healthier, uh, teach perspective, teamwork, conflict resolution, and I feel it in my hands. Like if I can see somebody who's having a hard time, and I feel it in my hands, and I know I can help them. Chris, Look at how different my hands are. When you're looking at somebody's proper posture, you should only see the thumb, and from the back, you should only see the back of their hand. Okay, so just that simple movement corrected that. So again, breathe in. What is your Indigenous worldview as it relates to sports and wellness? Well, sport was a way of life. 
Come on. Sorry. <laughs> Work with me. <laughs> okay, so now she's got that position. I want you to maintain that shoulder position. Voila. Voila. And come back up. Belly button in. And there you go. Did you feel a difference? Oh, yeah. So I was uh, presenting at uh, White Buffalo Conference on uh, violence, Indigenous <laughs> violence, and <laughs> kind of shocked people is because I started my, my uh, presentation with, these abusers have it right. Everybody just kind of looked at me, right? And I said, they're using the physical aspect to try to feel better. And I said, they're right. They're 100% right. This is what we need to do. I said, they're not doing it in the proper way. It's a natural tendency if somebody's not well to do something physically. But we have to teach our kids when they're coming up to use it in a positive way. And that's sport and physical activity. You saw that? And come back yeah. up, belly button in, and yeah. come back up. Most of uh, Indigenous people are living in urban centres right now. And the question is, how do we maintain the values and the thoughts and the simplicity in the teachings in an urban setting where, I mean, we're saturated with a different system? I think it's choosing moment by moment and doing the best that you can and remembering that you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And you're okay. And it's going to work out. So grateful and thankful to be able to witness all of these people who are rising up and helping to bring healing to our communities. And I hope that all of my ancestors are able to see that we are still continuing to live in a good way and that my children's children will still be able to live in this good way. Chimigwich Nikonagana. I too like to say Chimigwich to the Creator. As I, as I sit by the fire and after meeting all these beautiful people, I just, I just pray that my grandmother's watching down and watching over and, and seeing this healing process that's, that's coming for us all. And I'm so thankful that I'm part of this.